So what is the characteristic function of a random variable? And here we've got the definition where we use this symbol for the characteristic function of the random variable capital X and it's parameterized by little t. And it's defined to be the expectation of e to the power i t x, where i is the complex variable. And for the definition of expectation, uh, you can find a link in the details below this video. And here we are able to write out that expectation using that formula. And we have the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the i t x uh, times the probability density function for the random variable times dx. So this is just simply writing out this expectation. Now something that we can do now is simply swap the order of this, uh, swap the order of the probability density function with this exponential function, and we'll see then that it looks in a f f uh, form that's familiar to those of us who are familiar with Fourier transforms. And again, for more information on Fourier transforms, you'll also find links in the details below this video. But here we can see this is of the form of the inverse Fourier transform, where instead of having omega, which you have in the inverse Fourier transform, we've now got x. And there's also a scaling of 2 pi. So this is the inverse Fourier transform. I'll just, I'll just indicate this with omega replaced by x, and, uh, and I'll, I'll put the 2 pi scaling here. Uh, so it's important that uh, we just get that right for the to be exactly precise. But in fact, uh, it's just a scaling. So we this is a function of the form of the inverse Fourier transform and of the PDF. So it's the inverse Fourier transform of the PDF of the random variable. So this characteristic function can be found or can go backwards and forwards between the PDF and the characteristic function using the Fourier transform. So if we had the characteristic function and we wanted to find what the probability density function is, then we could use the Fourier transform. Uh, and of course, go backwards and forwards. It's an invertible function. So that's a nice property. So why are we interested in this? Why do we use this? Well, we are often interested in adding random variables. So this is one of the uses of the characteristic function. So if we had a, another random variable, which was z, and we wanted to know about its PDF, then we could try to find its characteristic function. And how would we find that? Well, it's the characteristic function of x plus y, if we had z being x plus y. So let's think of a new random variable z, which equals the addition of two other random variables. So in this case, we can use this definition here, and we can just simply write this in here. We've got the expectation of e to the power i t x plus y, our new random variable, which is the addition of two others. And this happens very often in many random variable scenarios. Let's say digital communications, where you've got the data plus noise, or where there's two users, one user plus another user. So a symbol from one user plus a symbol from another user. And you're wanting to find out what the overall PDF is. And there's many other examples, of course, where you're adding random variables. So in this case here, if the random variables x and y are independent, then this equals the expected value of e to the i t x times the expected value of e to the i t y. So this equals, as you can see here, the characteristic function of x times the characteristic function of y. So this is a very handy property because, as I say, if you're interested in the, what the uh, properties of the addition of two random variables is, then you can work out its characteristic function very simply by multiplying the characteristic function of the two independent random variables. Uh, and then, of course, that means if you want the probability density function of z, then you can just simply d perform this, find its characteristic function, and then take the Fourier transform, and you'll have the probability density function of z. If you weren't to do it with the characteristic function, then you would have to take the convolution of the two probability density functions. The probability density function of an x convolved with the probability density function of y. And we know that that's through the property of one of the properties of the Fourier transform. If you have convolution in one domain, you have multiplication in the other. And here we've seen for the 
a characteristic function, it's multiplication. So if you were to do it without the characteristic function, you'd have to do the convolution in the PDF domain, and that would be more complicated often. So this is one of the uses of the characteristic function. And I'll just point out one final thing here, oh no, maybe two other things. One thing is if we put uh, the parameter in there and we replace the t um, with minus i of t, then this equals e of uh, minus i squared t x, which of course equals the i squared equals minus 1. So this of course equals e to the t x, and this equals the moment generating function. So we again another function we're familiar with with random variables, the moment generating function. And again, there's a link below this video to that. And one final thing to note is that sometimes the characteristic function is defined in a slightly different way. So I'm going to write this out here with a prime above it, and it's sometimes defined to be uh, this function here, the expectation of e to the minus 2 pi i t of x. And with this definition, which is slightly different to this one, you can see there's a minus and there's the scaling of 2 pi. And in this case, then you're going to get, instead of the inverse Fourier transform, you're going to get the Fourier transform of the PDF in this case. Uh, so this is uh, something for, I think you can put this into the formula yourself, into the expectation formula, and you'll see that with this definition, you get the Fourier transform instead of the inverse Fourier transform. And it's all because of putting this minus here, which we didn't have in this definition up here. So it's just important that uh, you're aware of the fact that there is a different definition of the moment generating function. And again, with this definition here, uh, if we put in um, I t uh, divided by 2 pi with this new definition, uh, then we get the moment generating function. So this uh, definition here, I'll just put a box around it. This is a different definition, obviously very closely related, just simply with a minus in there. So if this video has helped you to get more insight into the moment, uh, the characteristic function and its relationship to the moment generating function and its uses, uh, then give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Of course, check out the web link in the details below this video where you'll find a full categorized list of all the videos on the channel. And subscribe to the channel for more videos.